Hello guys, Susanna here. Well, I'm super excited about starting this beautiful new project. Um, I was umming and ahhing whether I was going to do the frog one or the fox one. Here's the frog pattern. I'll give you a sneak peek. Frog pattern of that we're going to do that one. And I'll show you um, some of the other bits and pieces in a minute. Um, but I thought I'm going to start on that because I really want to focus on this eye so that frog pattern that I showed you will be um, next month's one so here's what you get in the frog not the frog the fox kit I did this um, this is just a photocopy of a journal that I made probably in 2000 and late 2018 I can't remember when it was um, I actually drew that um, you know just a detailed um, it's just it's not a, a very light photocopy because my um, printer is running out of ink so I, I did that and I actually do that with watercolor and then I highlighted it with um, pen and all that kind of stuff and I just love the look I love the eye and the way that it's a half um, half face and all that kind of stuff he looks a little bit like a bear on this one um, so the, the the kit is not huge but um, it's everything that you will need. So you'll get um, that pattern. And it just shows you what you need, what number and what's for where. And refer to the, the um, YouTube for tutorials. And I didn't have a great deal of this fabric left. So what I did is this part here has actually got the Vlizafix, um, the heat and bond already on it. Because I needed to trace it out so that I could have enough. At this point, I've got 10 kits. I may have enough to do maybe another five or so more. Um, I had to really go and buy some black because you need black for the eye. Um, black for the eye, black for the internal part of um, the eye and, the, and for the nose. And then um, that's that part there. It's a bit different shape, but I just had to cut them all out. My friend did it for me. That's for the actual eye. Um, and this big bit here um, is for the actual inside of it. Now, this looks a little bit like a bear. And this, once again, is from my fabric. Um, this is what I'm making for my fabric book. And the backgrounds are pieces that I've, you know, got one-off pieces. And the... Um, the red robin i had a big block so i'll show you what i'm doing with the uh, i had a big block of fabric whereas this see this is the um frog it's so cute and that'll be next month's one so i actually got the courage to do the frog because i had this fabric that looked like a lily pad and so i um same pattern and I'll just, it's still batik fabric and all that. And I'm still in the process of making mine. But um, that sort of was sitting on the lily pad. But with this one, I'm putting on a pod. And that also includes the background as well. So the frog's just sitting on a pod. And so you'll get this fabric and that fabric and all that. And this one actually does include um, the background fabric as well. So this I've made into what looks like a journal cover which I thought was really nice I'm gonna try and I figured most of the background of this so there you go sneak peek of what's happening next month um, yeah I've got enough I usually have enough to do I've got plenty of background fabric in that one not so much of this one I probably could go and get some more of this this was a another boutique one, so I could probably get something that's similar, but I've got, I just love the way it's got little spots and everything on there, so that's really, really cute. Um, so that's just the base of what it looks like. So I've got a roll of that olive colour background, so I've got plenty, I can make a few bases with that, but I'll just have to get more fabric for everything else. Um, whereas this, I just thought I haven't got, background material for that but you can probably just get you know you just need something that you can stick on so you could probably just get 
something plain because most of it is going to be used up by the actual um, this is sort of like a really thick linen-y calico fabric needs a bit of an iron um, and the reason why I chose to have um, this fabric be, is because most of the what's going to look really nice is all in the stitching and the background of like this here is sort of white and then has like from the reference photo that I took it from it has got a bit of yellow like you know brown and dark and all that kind of stuff in there and it's just mainly the fur so I thought I'll just do this ahead of time and just have gone with the pencil okay. like in previous times and just done you know flipped it on there like that just to give me a bit of an idea of course I'm going to do done a little bit on here you can't see it and I've actually when you've got the pattern it's all on there you can trace that on there and then this is going to be white because the reflection once again it's the eye is going to be the focus of this um, picture it's really really nice so um, and that's why I, I thought I needed some fabric in those colors um, you could probably almost even turn this into a bear if you wanted to but by the time you you use the fox colors it will look like a fox so it's nice and easy um, one to do but it's a fair amount of work because you're going to need to and it's just basically straight stitches I'll probably do some stem stitches along here and it's this this one is almost like painting with stitches so okay no worries so we'll get started I've got 10 of these already done like these um, kits and you don't get a heck of a lot in there but you don't need a heck of a lot um, so and so this one hasn't got the background whereas the frog one has and I'm gonna do um, probably some down the track where I'm gonna do construct a background with using different fabrics so I thought that would be really nice to have a background where you can make your own because I've been inspired by Alison Waitley or whatever her name is on um, Instagram she makes the most beautiful pieces of textile art and I love the backgrounds that she makes and I thought well they can tend to get a bit you know if I'm doing this every month they can probably tend to get a bit same old same old so I want to do something a little bit different and then part of the tutorial will be showing you how to create the background and I'll probably supply the uh, fabrics for that as well okay now to start what we need is to organize our, our beautiful pieces of um, Fabrics, no, threads. I'm just pinching this needle off another project. <laughs> okay. Um, what I really want to start on is the eye. So grab my needle and I've got the black here somewhere. So what I'm going to do is get the black. Yeah, the, the focus will be on the eye, I might. You'll have the hindsight of having what I'm doing, but I've got this, I might keep this as a bit of a, a bit of a guide. Okay. Um, yeah, the eye is really really the uh, focus on this one just so beautiful I'm like oh, I just want to very keen to get started oh, someone's revving up out there got some coons living in this area okay should have had this thread up already but I was just in the 
talking about the new kit mode I've had this sitting here like this for a little while and I've had to stop myself I went to this far and I've got to, I've got to stop myself so um, you know you just um, trace all the pattern and everything on a light box or if you haven't got a light box on a window and then use the actual picture that was in there as a bit of a guide and just you know it's not hard just flick with a pencil that way you can um, sew on the pencil um, and it's not not that uh, hard now okay so I'll start now this the reason why I'm wearing the thimble is because it's going to be fairly thick because I got the visor fix underneath the eye and then you got you got that that the visor fix that eye that eye so it's five layers so that's why I need the thimble to push it through not all of them are going to have such strong layers okay there. And then this is just a satin stitch where you connect oh, didn't think I was close enough okay there we go that's the beauty of you if you're not close enough you can always go back so how are we all going I hope you're enjoying this um, tutorials that I'm doing um, I'm enjoying making it and I've had lots of positive um, feedback people have enjoyed it and are happy to join in doing the um, monthly thing that I'm doing I'll have a beautiful book at the end of the year if you want you could probably make yours you know you can probably keep it like mine and turn your panels into a, uh, a nature quilt so that would be nice too but I've got um, limited wall space and I've got to keep it for certain thing and I just thought it would be a really nice um, thing in a fabric book that I can bring out maybe do tutorials on so. even with just having this black It'll make a bit of a difference. Okay. As close as you can. Okay. Ugh. Yeah, so it's not really a very difficult tutorial this month um, so that's that's why I want to do um, you know a bit more challenging things along the way and um, making your own background and doing a little bit of slow stitching on the actual background itself as well and do a bit of interest along the way and making them a little bit different like this very close up half face rather than having a full bird or a full you know like you got you had the full frog and the, and the little pod that that's sitting on i really like the frog it's so cute just a little bit different i've got a list of some of the um in my little book that I've got of what I want to do um, actually I might bring it out and I might list out some of the ideas that I've got where are we 
got what have I got? It's Red Robin, which I've done. That's the first one. The Owl, the Half Face Frog, um, Half Face Frog, Half Face um, Fox, the Frog, I've, Baby Bunny. I've already um, designed that one because not only do I need to stitch these, I've got to design these as well. So, because I've done the 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 bunny last year but this one's just a little bit different it's sort of like a re he's got really little ears and you can tell it's a baby um what else have i got what i want to do i've got this really cute picture that i've seen it's a snail on top of a mushroom and it's really cute it's just something very different a raccoon i might do um i just love raccoons everyone it wouldn't be a nature booklet for me if I didn't have a raccoon in it so cute um a baby deer once again like this I actually painted um a journal with a baby deer on there um Sandra my friend Sandra's got that one and Gail um is it Tuthill I don't know how to pronounce Gail's name she's She's bought the the um the deer one that was beautiful. It was a hand painted with um what's it called? Acrylic paints are really cute. And then I want to do a blue bird, um, which I've sort of shown you the blue bird that I had in the start, but my niece came over and I made this beautiful um nest and all that kind of stuff, and then I dyed some fabrics and I want to use some of those dyed fabrics as part of the background for the nest you should see it actually should grab it how gorgeous is that so like with that other half nesting I'm going to use these and it's sort of in the green green and then they're sort of like a jadey color um, from an old vintage tablecloth and then you use fabrics and stuff which you weave in and out so I think this is going to be an awesome one so I dyed that um, and was very very happy with how that turned out and my niece made a um, like a collage thing with some birds and butterflies and it looks really pretty so and a squirrel of course and a hedgehog and definitely want to do a hummingbird i've actually got the background fabric for the hummingbird which you saw in a previous video so gee, you've got to always be thinking ahead and now that i've got a job i definitely need to be thinking ahead okay Oop. it's just taking quite a while because i'm yapping but also because five layers, oh my goodness, it's sick. Okay. Now. There we go. So there you go. Oh, there was another one. What did it say? Ladybird or the butterfly. So there's actually 13 ideas. Um, yep, yeah, so then there's only 12 months. <laughs> so um, I might continue off into the, the following year. And by that time, I'll probably do something different. Okay. Yes, there you go. Here's my little book of, book of ideas journal ideas fabric stuff for my family which i do need to actually finish that my um, sewing journal and family heritage journal okay and probably one little more on the bottom There we go. 
Yeah. Now I'm wondering. I think it's shaped okay. Um, sometimes when things don't turn out as round as you like, you just can do a back stitch around it to sort of make it stand out a little more. So I might just finish that off. And I think I'm going to put that over here because I may end up using it again. And I've got some brown and I'd like to um, actually, you know what I'm going to do underneath that? I'll do a little bit of gold, a little bit of gold just here. Or did I do use that one? Because that might be a bit too full on. Mm. I think I'm, I don't know. I'll do the gold in the skin. I'll use this one. It's sort of gold, but it's not as. Okay. Now I've got lines going in and around here, which I will do with the brown. But for now, I'm going to use this goldy colour. because I'm going to go underneath. I was thinking just underneath his eye have a little bit of a bit of a glint. on that way anyway. Um, what I might do with this is I'm gonna do that until it reaches where I'm gonna put the cream like that whitey cream colour and then it's so hard to get in there. Where is it? There it is. side happened to get caught in the thread okay yeah sometimes it's just the little things that can make a difference Now, I'm going to do another layer, a couple of layers around the bottom, make it a little bit thick. Good grief, it's so thick. Uh, 
gonna I'm gonna cut this off because it's gonna annoy me. I did thread it off, so it was okay. Right, go back again. Give me some extra colour. Just a little bit under the eye. Where is it? Just here. Yep. So I'm just wondering whether I go around this with the gold to give it that extra sheen, which I very may well. So I'm going to Pick this up. Yeah. And do a back stitch just to actually hold the eye onto the other one. And I'm going to do it in this goldy brownie colour because this beautiful fox has got the most beautiful eyes and rather than doing a blanket stitch I just want to keep it um, you know so enough to hold it down but not so full on and in your face And I think a blanket stitch is all right when you're doing quilting stuff, but when you're actually trying to do textile art and it's more of a paintery look, you really do want to stick to running stitch. So it's not as full on, if you know what I mean. With blanket stitch, you've got the line and then you've got the lines going like that. And when they're made too big, it's too in intrusive and you're trying to... Um, like you need to see it but at the same time you don't need to see it oh jeez it's thick okay um, yeah. this is okay if you're going to be stitching along with me probably just do this part of the eye today I'll do the white actually before I do the white I'm probably going to do when I say white, I'm actually going to do probably just this cream. I think white will be too um, stark in the eye because the background of the this is quite cream. I'm going to use white in this because I'll need the contrast of white on there. But in the eye, I'm going to use sort of a light cream. After I've stitched around the eye, I'll bring it up and show you. Now you don't need to have this stuff. A couple of threads of DMC. When you're doing back running stitch, you use probably two threads. In the middle, you would probably use three if you were using black, um, which is like floss. Um, that's fine to use that. That's why I have been using for years. I've just gotten spoilt at Christmas with these, which I really love using. But you a big believer of using what you have because there's nothing wrong with um DMC thread, that's for sure. Okay. 
I'm glad I did that. This colour for around the eye. I think it looks awesome already. Okay. Come on, need to see that. No, there we go. Okay, one more stitch. Finish that off. Okay, now I'll bring it up to the camera and show you. It's probably been how many minutes already? Okay, you can see. I'll try and get as close as I can without it going all spack on me. So, just a little bit underneath there, and that part is too. Now, where's the. Here's the pattern. So, you can see on the pattern um, that little bit there. So, that bit there and all that kind of stuff that's what you would draw on, that is going to be done in the creamy colour. And then you've got all these little lines like we have in a normal eye, which I'm going to go around and I'm going to do that in that colour. So what I might do is I might pause it and see. And for this video, I'm trying to bring it up. You can it's sort of hard to see. There we go. And I'll do that behind camera and then unpause it and I'll show you that finished part of, of this tutorial so the next bit that we're going to be doing it actually requires quite a bit like as you can see here it's quite dark and black and we'll probably do the black and um, all that kind of stuff actually around the eye um, and you know you can get you can want to get started on yeah so that'll be the next part okay I'll just pause it and I'll be back okay back again now what I've done like this on that pattern here um i've just stitched with the sort of like integrated into with the black as well it looks a bit starey at the moment and then with the the brown i sort of did stitches along there not getting quite up to where that is just stitch straight stitch along there and then once i got there i just did a backing stitch here to there so at the moment it looks pretty like you can see the white and it looks pretty full on but geez it looks really good i can see if i can close get as close as i can now i've got to go over this here with a back stitch like what i did here in the black just to hold that down see how it's coming up okay so i'll do that so you can do that as your homework and then the next one um i'm going to when I got the black around there, I'm going to continue on like with a lot of straight stitch like that and continue it along here to make the black come out here like it is here because that's what foxes look like. They look like they're wearing a bit of eyeshadow. But how good does that look already giving that fox a little bit of a detail against this beautiful colour here? So you need a brown, like a light brown sort of a goldy a goldy yellowy color and then a cream so a crew it is and black um where are we these are probably going to be the majority of the colors plus that goldy one and i may use that one as well um to go in with the fur and in here as well so um look for these type of colors so 
make a mental mental image of what you need okay guys thank you very much and um oh, i love it that's why i really wanted to do it because the eye just looks so beautiful like how good does that look and it's really quite simple all that is here is just a satin stitch it's quite tough because it's got to go through the layers and that's why i didn't want to do it on camera because it just it'll take a while to get through the layers but you just be patient do a statin stitch and sort of follow the grain and go around like in the sun okay well i will catch you later um and good luck with your stitching if you wanted to you could always you know go and do the other side and do another one and maybe um do a full full one if you like okay i'll catch you in the next one thanks for watching